without a doubt, we are in a season of growth. And one of the fastest ways I believe we can grow spiritually is to start embracing areas of weakness in our lives. We all have them, and I'm here today to break that stigma surrounding them. If we deny we have weaknesses, or if we give them too much identity, we end up closing the door on God and His power to give us strength where it is needed most. We miss out on an opportunity to bring glory to God. Maybe you've identified yourself as someone who isn't a leader, maybe someone who lacks proper communication skills, maybe you've identified as someone who's just fearful. But by being honest with ourselves about those areas that <clears throat> we lack most in our lives, we can move forward and begin to replace our lack with abundance, with the abundance that God has for us. In our openness and honesty, we draw closer to God and to each other. We forge a bond that empowers us to face challenges with renewed strength. Having humility about areas we lack in our lives will lead us to relying on God and His strength. In 1 Peter 5, <clears throat> verse 5, it says, Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper <clears throat> time He will exalt you. It says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. But what does Scripture say about God's grace? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, sent to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insult, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God's grace is sufficient for you, and His power is made perfect through your weakness. God will use thorns in our lives to display His power, to sustain us, <clears throat> and to use us for the good of His kingdom. Throughout Scripture, God chose people who were seen as weak or lacking, people who had thorns in their lives. Yet these individuals endured and overcame their thorns to do amazing things for God's kingdom. All thanks to God's grace and His empowerment. If you think about it, Abraham was old and lacked faith. Moses was slow of speech and tongue. Gideon was a frightened warrior hiding from the Mennonites. David was a small little shepherd boy. Now, what was the outcome of some of these men's weaknesses? We hear about it in Hebrews 11, and in verse 32 it says, I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength. When we embrace our weakness, it means we've looked at ourselves long enough to know we can't make it without looking to God. Embracing weakness means we know <clears throat> We know that we need God to fill that gap. God can and will use anyone who doesn't hold anything back from Him. So let us acknowledge those areas of weakness in our lives. Let us give them to God and see how His power is made perfect through our least likely situations. God bless you.